Hi guys, and welcome to the first Soulful Sunday. Uh, this is gonna be a series that I'm doing where I am channeling specifically. I'm not doing a reading. I am um, giving you guys information to help you along on your spiritual journey. What works for me personally, what my guides have told me, um, how I understand things, we're gonna be getting into that. So this has been highly requested, different types of videos. We did a vote last week and spirit guides, how to work with your spirit guides, how to specifically like introductions was the thing that you guys wanted to see the most. So that is what we are covering today. Um, the poll is up now for next week. If you wanna check that out on the community page, if you have not already, go ahead and subscribe and do post notifications because I'm gonna be doing these on Sundays, but I, <laughs> I don't know what time on Sundays and I don't know what time I'm going to be putting the poll out. It's just going to depend on the week. And then, you know, I do my regular reading. So um, if you guys want to be notified when new videos are up, that would be beneficial for you. Okay. Um, before we get started on this, hopefully you can read this. I know it's like small and my handwriting is not amazing. If you can't read it, just listen. This is more so for me to keep me on track. <laughs> Um, and then if you, you can read it, you can, you know, jot that down. <laughs> um, you don't really need to jot that down. It's more so for me. Okay. So, um, before we get started with working with guides, what I want to let everyone know specifically is, um, not every guide is for every person. Um, we'll get more into that. Number two, especially is one of the like most important things you need to remember when working with your guides, when trying to open yourself up to the spirit world. But that's like a word of caution is that you are opening yourself up to the spirit world and there's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing you need to fear about that because we do as souls exist in the spiritual world anyway. Um, and it, it can be really beneficial for you to deepen your knowledge spiritually, but it's important to keep in mind that when working with spirits, with deities, with, you know, Orishas, um, they can be tricky sometimes because not all, um, guides are angels. I think angels are a really good starter. My first, like live being that I worked with besides like that I was conscious of this is who this is was Archangel Michael and I've talked about that before and I think that the angels are good starters because angels typically carry an energy signature where they're not going to be um <laughs> I want to say it's demanding like I'd say it's okay to say that because like <sighs> as you get to know your deities and you know look into their myth Keeping in mind that these are written by humans, you know, a lot of times they have, especially as like Christianity kind of took over the globe, a lot of the religious texts, myths of other, um, you know, bodies of thought, spiritual thought were destroyed, tampered with, you know, a lot of the deities were written to be, you know, crazy, demonic, incestuous, you know, and um, you kind of have to look past um, the human error there and get to know the energy. Um, but, you know, anybody that has studied any sort of myth, you know that most deities take on a humanic type of energy where sometimes they are rageful, sometimes they are aggressive, sometimes, you know, they get mad and take things out on um, others. And that's not to scare anyone, but you do need to be aware the type of, you know, beings that you're working with. Um, an angel, you make a promise to an angel and you don't follow through. It's not going to be as big of a deal if you make a promise to a deity that is very powerful and you don't follow through or, you know, um, different sort of spiritual creatures like the Fae, for instance. The Fae, you know, there's thousands of different types of Fae, but the, the underlying <laughs> energy of Fae is trickster energy you know you get on the good side of the fey they can work magic for you literally you get on the bad side of the fey they are very aggressive and trickster so you know some entities people will call on some deities you'll try to call on 
Uh, it's inappropriate, honestly. Um, in my experience, every single guide that I work with called to me first. I have never, ever reached out to a guide. Um, I've never called to a guide. I have never tried to work with a guide that did not let me know first that they wanted to work with me. Um, and what you'll find when you are working with guides, when you do open yourself up to this, is that you have your parent guides and then you have the guides that will work with you um, through a certain point in your life and then they'll release you. And you can come back to those guides since you already have the relationship. That's really the only time I would say that it's okay to call to a guide is when you have an established relationship and they let you know firsthand that they wanted to work with you. So that is important to keep in mind. Don't be one of these people that is, you know, I want to do love spells, so I'm going to call on Aphrodite. I'm going to call on Oshun. Did that, did, you know, that Venusian, well, I mean, any guy, did that guy let you know that they wanted to work with you? Especially people that try to dabble in darkness. You know, um, some of the most powerful spirits out there are the Lawa. But the Lawa should really not be called on to do, you know, harm to other people, especially if you don't have ancestral ties and those Lawa do not want to work with you. Because when working with spirits, when opening yourself up to this, there are a lot of trickster energies out there that, you know, you think that you're working with Aphrodite, for instance, you're working with a demon, you know, and that demon is making you all these promises and, you know, you're, you're attempting to work with that person, you are intertwining your body, um, your spiritual body, your energy signature with that demon. And demonic uh, entities especially, there's a tax for them working with you. You will be indebted to that um, entity. So there's, you have to be careful when opening yourself up to the spirit realm. And this is why we allow the guides to call on us. And we build a relationship with that guide before we ever try to work with that guide's energy, especially doing spells. Do not ever, ever call on a guide that you have never worked with, that you don't have a relationship with, to do some sort of magical, um, you know, they're not genies. They're really not. This is your spiritual team that guides you, and their, their hierarchy is way up here. It's narcissistic to believe that they are your genies that you summon, and then they do what you want, and then you discard them. And that's where people really get in trouble especially calling on, um, I've seen it a lot with Anubis, for instance. Anubis is, um, you know, the underworld. A lot of misinformation is out there about Anubis because Anubis' energy is very powerful and he's associated with darkness a lot. And there are demons out there that pose as Anubis. So people, I've seen videos out there by um, somebody that said, you have to speak in tongues when you speak to Anubis. And that's not, you know, you don't just go around speaking in tongues to a spirit that you're not familiar with and you don't know. Because if you're looking for something dark, um, something dark will find you, but it's not necessarily going to be what you think it is. So these are things to really keep in mind is intention. Intention is really everything in your spiritual journey. And if your intention is to find, um, you know, uh, powerful spirits that will work as genies for you and that you can kind of command at will and gain power over others, this is not your uh, video. This is not for you and you're not working with deities, I promise you. Um, spirit, the divine, is all about sovereignty. So it's about finding your inner power, connecting with um, your guide, your spiritual team to help you find your way in your journey and to come home to yourself. It's a constant, uh, on your spiritual journey, it is a constant journey of coming home to yourself. So that is the main thing I want to get across in this video is that, you know, you don't sit here and hear me say that Anubis is, you know, one of my parent guides. And then you say, I'm going to go summon Anubis. That is not, not ever what you should do. Okay, now that we're past that, one, you have to ask them. Um, I've talked about this in some of my readings before. Um, the difference between really divinity and demonic energy is the divine is free will, is, you know, sovereignty. Um, demonic is codependency. No, um, guide is really going to be comfortable working with, they're not going to force you to work with them and they're not going to be comfortable working with anybody that's wishy-washy, that doesn't know what they want, 
if you, um, I mean, even if you try to do a spiritual candle to a guide, if it comes up that it's, you know, it's um, waxy and you can't see through, that's usually a sign that you are not clear enough on your intentions. And so with any sort of relationship, especially with a divine being, you need to let them know, I would like to work with you. And, you know, that is done in prayer, that is done through meditation, that is done through journaling, through scripting, whatever is your, um, you know, what your comfort level is speaking with God, with, you know, divine energy. You let them know that I would like to meet my spirit guides. That's really where I started. I, um, I, I'm not going to get into my awakening but I was aware that I had a team. Um, I was aware that I, I had a group that was leading me, but it was not until a few years later when I was kind of at a like <laughs> live or die type of situation in my life where I really needed to make a decision if I wanted to release the life that I had and start anew or um, you know possibly perish to that karmic life. And it was then that I let God know that I give my life to God. You know, I give my life to whatever the divine needs of me. Um, and, you know, I want to meet my team and I want to know what you want of me and just show me and I'll do it. And that's kind of where I started. Okay. So ask and then um, <laughs> follow up. Listen, once you ask, once you open that door, they will start to send you signs. I mean, if they're calling to you already, they will send you signs, but you need to let them know um, that you are open and ready and, you know, that you are ready to step on your path and to be serious about it. Not a, I want to be on my path when I'm in trouble and I need help, but when I have a lot of distractions going on in my life, I don't really want to be on that path. You have to be serious about, I am turning over my life to God right now, and I would like to meet my team and embody my team because um, what you're really doing is these are spiritual bodies, yes, but the spirit world exists like a tree. So, you know, at, at the trunk, at the core, we have spirit, life force, energy, and then it branches out. So truly, you know, all life is connected, all souls are connected, all energies are connected, and it is just about aligning so your guides will come to you, they will call to you during the right time. Number three is timing is important because certain guides will come to you at certain points in your life where you're ready. So um, and I have some of my guides here. Uh, I, I got some things off of their altars. I have altars to all of my main guides that I am working with. If you are going to work with a guide, so I have this on here, working on the relationship number eight. We're going to bounce around, but this is just to help me stay on track. So I would take notes with this, guys. And if you have questions, comment below. I'll try to get back to everybody if I have time. Um, I've talked about this last year. I actually talked about how my first guide that called to me was Ogun. Um, so with all of my parent guides that I work with regularly that want an altar, I ask them if they want an altar and they will let me know. Um, and how, how you develop that intuition, it starts with following your own intuition, trusting yourself. And as you go down that path, it's a work in progress. I talked about this a year ago. So last summer, I did a video where I, I talked about my ancestry and how your ancestors are a key to unlocking your guides. Um, <laughs> that video, like I've, ex I've grown a lot from that point. So I would prefer just to do a new video on that than have you guys go watch that. Um, so I'm not gonna link it below. I don't, I feel like I've grown a lot since then, but you know, that's where I was on my path then. And that's the message I wanted to get out. Anyways, so the first guide that ever called to me was Ogun. Ogun is a Norisha. Uh, within the Yoruba religion. It is a religion mostly practiced in Nigeria. It is very common for um, Western Africa. So it is very common for people with African ancestry, especially, you know, in the Americas, in areas where um, your ancestors were slaves to come from West Africa. That is where the vast majority of slaves were captured. Um, so imprisoned. <laughs> 
So um, I know somebody didn't like me saying capture it. I don't like that word either. It's just when I'm channeling, I'm like getting feelings and thoughts and images and I'm just, you know, translating. Sometimes I don't use the best word. So I, I do apologize to somebody that got offended. I felt that. Um, okay, Ogun is an Orisha. That, that is what they are considered. That is a religion that believes there is one God and that um, it's, it's, I was gonna say it's similar to angels and they said don't you dare say that they are orishas they're not angels so it is um god created the orishas to be able to work with humans and because you know god is um busy you know it, it's similar in voodoo voodoo there are there is one god good god bon, bondi and there are the spirits that were created by god because god is you know for, further from earth so in order to have more um, in-depth interaction with the humans there were the law created so it, it's a similar with the orishas they're saying not similar orishas are different orishas are their own things they are not angels they're not spirits they are orishas okay um <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> Uh, in the Yoruba religion, you have parent Orishas. Now, I, at that time, had never done ancestry. I, um, white. I didn't know what my ancestry was. You know, I heard Irish, whatever, everybody. You know, I heard Irish. I heard at some point, we very far back Cherokee, because where I am, I live, uh, my ancestors, where I've grown up, where generations Cumberland Gap, which was where, you know, there were a lot of natives. So most people here hear from, you know, relatives that we have Cherokee somewhere. I get it. Most white people say they have Cherokee. I don't have actually have Cherokee. I have a, I have a different tribe. It does not matter. Um, okay. So Ogun, how I started to notice Ogun was calling to me. And I discussed this in that video. I um, was on YouTube and again, I had never looked, I didn't know anything about African religions at that time. I felt like it's not appropriate for me to work with African religions, you know. I had never looked into it. I didn't know what an Orisha was, didn't know anything about it. So um, I was on YouTube and Ogun songs started to pop up, songs of worship, tribal songs for Ogun. And it was like one after the other after the other and i had never again i had not this is not part of my logarithm where i'm looking up different religions i had never looked into the i had, i was only actively working with archangel michael at that time had never even looked into other religions um so at first i was like that's interesting but and i was interested and i i felt called to listen to some of the songs and i really liked them i really really enjoyed tribal music um I liked them a lot and I resonated with them that they felt good and I enjoyed listening to them. But as, for a while it was hard for me because I felt like it's not appropriate for me to work with an Orisha and I fought it for a long time. But finally I was like, I was seeing his name everywhere. I would log on to Instagram and it would be something about Ogun. And you know, that's not something that you see all the time, especially as somebody that had never looked into Yoruba, had never looked into African religion. Um, and it was just like, one after the other after the other. So finally, I was like, fine, I will work with you. I will get to know you. So I did. I got to know his energy. Um, and then I talked about it in that video last year. Actually, uh, like several, this was like um, in 2019, this was happening to me. And I actually posted a song about it on my uh, private Instagram. Um, this was happening like fall, um, winter. Last summer, my brother took a 23andMe um, ancestry test and found out that we have ancestry tied to um, Angola and the Congo. So um, although it's not Nigeria, it is immediately below, which means that there's a good chance that my ancestors did worship the Orishas, my guys say that they did. So um, that was a major blessing for me to find. And then also with Anubis, the second guy that called to me was Anubis. Anubis, I started to sing deal, video after video about Anubis. I had never looked in, I mean, I thought Egyptian, you know, I liked, uh, I like some, you know, Egyptian, I, I like the, um, <laughs> I liked the Ankh, I like the symbology. I looked into symbols tied with Egyptian um, myth. I had never looked into it, especially like, I just, I had a lot going on. I wasn't, I'm not 
I, at this point I do because I've accepted that I'm a shaman and that's part of shamanism is that you need to learn all the religions of the world and learn how to resonate because everybody has different ancestors and I can't help you with your ancestral healing if I don't know anything about your ancestry. So it's a part of your shaman studies to learn and um, resonate in some way with every religion. So um, I have stopped fighting my shamanism since then, but this this was my first um, Ogun. He is my parent, Orisha. And yes, I know you technically have to be um, indoctrinated by a priest and go through a ritual and they assign them. Um, it's COVID. I really don't have, you know, the means to go through a, a ritual and I do eventually want to go see a, a priest, but that's not something I can do right now with COVID restrictions and it's just not feasible for me to do. But also I, again, I, I fought against working with Ogun for a long time and my guides, it was offensive. And that's kind of how I feel when they call on you. But um, it's it's tied into your ancestry. My guides tell me that the vast majority of your guides will be tied into your ancestry somewhere. So uh, Anubis. Anubis was the second guide that I worked with. Um, Anubis, keys for working with Anubis, that Anubis is calling to you, black dogs everywhere. I was seeing black dog, black dog, black dog, you know, with the jackal ears. Um, Anubis worst songs of worship were coming up, you know, Egyptian myth, you know, photos of Anubis everywhere. So finally I was like, yes, I'll work with you. And his energy is very, very powerful. So there's a reason that Ogun is known for clearing the way. He's clear cut Orisha. He will clear the way. That was what he was incarnated to do. Uh, God, um, I don't, I don't remember what they refer. It is, it is a longer word that I can't pronounce what, what they refer to as the, I need to study more Yoruba. I haven't, I've been studying different religions. I need to circle back to Yoruba. It's, it's been a while. Um, God is not, not what they call the, um, source energy. I can't remember it right now. Um, Ogun was created as an Orisha because, um, spirit had decided it wanted to come to earth and inhabit earth but there was too much brush and it was overgrown so ogun was created um as an orisha to clear cut with his machete um to clear cut the brush out of the way and make a way for the orisha to come and then and start to build up humanity so that is um ogun's role um, he is an Orisha of war, of iron. He um, is a shamanic spirit. He works with, um, he harbors a shamanic spirit. <laughs> They're going to be correcting me throughout this. So um, again, it's like translating. Um, he, iron, working with your hands. So people that are, um, and technology and the military. So people that are like, uh, mechanics that are in the military that um, you know are doctors a lot of them will resonate with um, Ogun and, and call on Ogun for bus favor with their business and you know where I am a shaman and where I create tools with my hands Ogun is my father Orisha um, that is told to me by Ogun by my team I want to go to a priest one day and I will it's just not feasible right now so do not come for me I have not seen a priest I know that in order to be indoctrinated into the Yoruba religion but you don't have to be indoctrinated to work with the Orishas and um he called to me so that's the difference Anubis, um, you'll see black dogs. Anubis is a key keeper. So there are different um, key keepers that rule the where the spirit world meets the physical world, the crossroads. Uh, Hecate, Ogun is one that's associated with railroads with um, not as much the crossroads, but with the railroads. Hecate is the railroads as well. Um, Saint Peter Francis, I believe, is the saint that works with, is the key holder in Catholicism. Uh, there's Papa Legba um, in Voodoo. There are, there are different key holders that are associated with key. So within Egyptian, um, 
if I'm Egyptian religion, uh, Anubis is keys. I I was seeing literally with Anubis, I was seeing a shadow and I have worked with spirits my whole life. So I can tell the difference between a spirit and um, as somebody that experienced a very dark depression starting really young where I was having nightmares and seeing entities really, really young, which is common for people that are, have a shaman path. Um, I know the difference. I knew the difference. I can tell the difference between this is a spirit. I can tell the difference between this is a dark entity, which really only um, try to feed off of you in times of depression. Um, you know, the uh, paralysis, sleep paralysis demons that you see a lot of times, it's when you're going through a really dark time in life and you're feeling very depressed, you will have dark entities that will come to try to feed off of you because they feed off of fear. Um, and that's that's kind of why they do the sleep paralysis thing is that the more afraid you get, the more they'll grow closer because they're feeding off of you. Um, so yeah, Anubis, I did not, I mean, I didn't, I don't like being snuck up on. So I didn't like that part of working with Anubis. And I even talked about um, in the video that I did last year about how I asked Anubis specifically not to manifest as his like full form. I asked him if he wanted to get my attention to manifest as a dog at first and it, it's really like a relationship where I explained to him that you're scaring me a little bit just because he has a very strong force and I knew that it wasn't like dark as in like a dark energy. It was just a, a dark figure because he's black. Um, so that's kind of how I started working with Anubis. And then as I was saying, my brother finding out that we, we have Congo, um, um, Angola ancestry, my father took an ancestry test and he is part Egyptian, very small bit like my brother with the Congo, but it's there. So um, ancestral, a lot of your guides are gonna be tied to your ancestry. So I actually think that it's very, very beneficial to do an ancestry test, especially if you see signs and symbols from guides, but you're not sure, getting an ancestry test and seeing that you do have that little bit like I did helped bring reassurance to me that that's who I'm supposed to be working with. And yes, my ancestors did work with those guides. And yes, this is part of my ancestry work is calling on the same, um, not calling, they called me first, but answering the call, that's a better, you answer the call, they call to you and then you answer, but you have to, ask to open up that doorway and then you have to pay attention okay um past life ties so i have certain guides that i don't know my guides say that i do i haven't discovered it yet they have told me before that um all of your guides you would be able to find in your ancestry at some point it might be the tiniest 0.5 amount is you know my dad's egyptian but it's there um Past life ties. So I have had past lives where I worked with voodoo. I worked with voodoo. So I do have the law that work with me. And, you know, by my appearance, by, you know, people would judge me. People do judge me. The fact that I do have Orishas, that I do have the law that I work with. Um, my Lawa I keep private because um, my Lawa, there are certain guides that want me to channel with them, that want me to talk about them. These are these are guides that have agreed to be a part of this with me. Uh, and then there are certain guides that don't want that, that want a private relationship. So that, that depends on your relationship with those guides. I have Lawa that I work with, I do. Um, and I have beautiful relationships with those Lawa and they are, your parent team stays with you in lifetime after lifetime. So they don't necessarily have to be a part of, you know, what your ancestors were, you know, the majority of your ancestors, a lot of them, um, and you'll feel that relationship. You've had past lives where you resonated with that guide, you worked with that guide, you know, they, they follow you through lifetimes. So learning your ancestry and also doing past life, um, what is it, uh, past life, I want to say regret, no, regression, there, I was going to say regression, regression. Um, that will help you clues, clues to what you should um, be looking for. Again, let them call you first because with timing is important. There are certain guides that do not want to work with you until you are ready. Anubis is a very powerful guide that deals with shadow work. Until I was ready to really get into shadow work, Anubis would not touch me. 
Um, this brings me to the Morgan. This is uh, one of the Morgan's pieces on her altar. Again, I create altars to all of my guides. I give offerings, I do candles, and I do this on a regular basis. Um, not when I'm asking for something because this is a relationship that you're building. They are not genies to do your bidding and it's very disrespectful to treat them that way. And a lot of your guides will refuse to work with you if that's the relationship that you want because again, the hierarchy, you're not, you're not above a deity. You know, you're not above uh, these powerful spirits that, you know, work directly with source. That's not, you need to humble yourself a little bit. Um, the Morgan is uh celtic she um is terrifying <laughs> anyone that has worked with the morgan she's terrifying so i um i have cernunos here this is cernunos um they let me know the presence that they want so he picked this out <laughs> we went to a spiritual shop i saw this I asked him if he'd like it. And Serenus is one that never wanted an altar because he likes to be outside. He doesn't want to be inside. Um, so, you know, if I put an altar, he would prefer an outside altar, but he did allow me to get this so that I could like put things in it for him. Um, so I, I knew that Serenus is one of my main guides. I started working with Serenus shortly after um, Anubis, I believe. I think that Serenus was the, the third one that came in. Anyways, the Morgan. So actually, the Morgan called to me on my birthday this year. Uh, I've been on my spiritual journey for several years. The Morgan did not decide I was ready to work with her energy until February of this year. So what happened when the Morgan called on me, I actually was doing a um, protection ritual and the, the ritual that I was doing called for me to go on like a sunrise hike and to um, bury some uh, items, spell work items. So I had just buried the items and I turned around to, you know, make my trek back home and I saw a flock of crows fly overhead. Um, and it was, I had a very eerie feeling in the pit of my stomach and then I went out that day for my birthday obviously I'm going to shops and I'm seeing like crows ravens everywhere and um, I had been followed by ravens for about a year and I um I knew that they were a sign of spell work I knew that for me personally seeing a lot of ravens um like flying at me getting my attention um I, I knew that that was a sign that somebody was sending me dark energy. It, it happened actually my birthday the year before. Um, I went on a trip with some friends. We were, um, we had stayed at a condo. We had gone to, some of us that were not hungover went to go sit in the hot tub in the like community center or whatever. And we, they had a bar of food. So we got food and we're, we ate our food. We like closed the things covered them and then went and got into the hot tub out of nowhere <laughs> out of nowhere um a huge flock of crows comes they throw our towels off the like to-go containers opened the to-go containers took our food and then like went and with the food hanging out of their mouth like sat in the trees around us, like calling at us like crazy. It was, and it was like this weird, like almost like a storybook where it was like, it was like a tornado of black came and it was like, what the fuck is this? It was like crazy. It was so crazy. And it was then I knew that somebody had tried to do a death ritual on me. I just intuitively knew it. I knew that they were going to start doing it. So I had already got like a protection tattoo for it but I knew that it, it was coming because my guides had warned me that it was coming. And it was like, at that moment, I was like, bingo, you know? So that was her. <laughs> I, um, she is one that do your research before you answer their call. She is one that you really, and like Anubis, Anubis is one, he's known for being tough. Uh, Hecate is another one, very tough. You do not work with the shadow uh, deities if you are not prepared to do shadow work to address your darkness to you it's serious Hecate Anubis and the Morgan are the most serious guides that I have they are not messing around um so I 
it's very common if you start to work with the Morgan that she is going to scare the hell out of you. And she did. I agreed to work with her. Again, this was February this year. I had been on my spiritual path for a long time. I had dealt with black magic. I had defeated black magic in my life. I uh, agreed to work with her. And I had very vivid nightmares to where I could not sleep for almost a week afterwards. And I was seeing figures in my room. And it was terrifying. It was very terrifying. But it was a situation where she called for me to face my shadow. She called for me to toughen up. She called for me to address the darkness within spirituality. So there are certain guides that you need to know who you're working with before. Because if I would have agreed to work with the Morgan, and then I would have had nightmares to where I literally did not get sleep for days on end because I was scared to go to sleep. And I am, you know, an adult that has dealt with uh, spiritual attacks my entire life. I'm a shaman. I've dealt with spirits for a very, very long time. The energy that she was putting off was terrifying. It took me about two weeks to adjust to her energy. And as soon as I kind of addressed the things that she wanted me to address, I was able to sleep again. And, and that like waking up in a cold sweat and something's in my room and I can't get it to leave and it's scaring me. Um, that was her. And she told me it was her and it was still scary. She told me, you don't have anything to worry about. This is just me. I'm watching you sleep. I couldn't sleep because her energy is like friggin' scary as hell. So the Morgan, no, do not. I want to work with the Morgan. Do you? <laughs> Are you prepared? Are you prepared? That's kind of the energy with these guides is not all of them are like, none of them are going to work as a genie to answer your all of your wishes. Some of them prefer for you to not know them by name until you're ready to work with them. Because once you agree to attach their energy to your energy, it is going to be a lot. It is a lot. Things took a dark turn for a little while for me when I started working with Anubis. Uh, Nubis and then Hecate came in close. I have asked my guides in my, <laughs> they're always here for some reason. I asked my guides if Serenus was the third I started working with and they said no. And I was like, who was the third? It was Hecate. Hecate came in slow, like about a week or two after Anubis and my life took a really, really dark turn for a while. Like really bad things started happening in my life. And was it because of them? No, it was because they required me to elevate myself, especially when it comes to protection. So they kind of unleashed more dark energy into my life so that I could protect myself. So um, that brings us to number six. You need to understand that your life will change. It will change. So again, it's not one of those things that, yeah, they'll, they work with you and they try to guide you and try to send you messages, but um, a lot of them stay anonymous because they're they don't want to scare you. They don't want to overwhelm you and they don't feel like you're ready. So when you call to them and again, they'll call to you, but you ask them, you ask them to reveal themselves. You need to understand that uh, things are going to change for you. And a lot of times things are going to get a lot harder because there are things in your life that you need to address. So it's not possible to work one-on-one -on -one with a guide and not have stuff come up in your life. So it's really, it's not a uh, energy of, I'm going to call on the Morgan and she is going to bring me a million dollars and then I'm gonna forget about her and let, you know, whatever, five. <laughs> That's not it. Uh, the Morgan said, I wanna work with you. Do you wanna work with me? And I thought about it and I did research on her and then I said, yes. I uh, thank you for calling on me. I, cause you know, you're a child, especially if these are your parent guys, you are a child of them. So it is an honor for me to be their child and it is an honor, but you don't have to answer the call. And if you don't feel like you're ready, you don't feel like you're ready, but do understand that sometimes I say, I don't feel like I'm ready. And then my guides start to kick up chaos in my life until I'm like, yes, okay. If I didn't feel like I was ready to do these videos, they told me I had to or else. So. It's a thing that we are here to learn and grow and challenge ourselves. You're, you cannot connect with your spiritual team if you don't want to challenge yourself and grow. But again, you need to do your research before you answer their call because some of these guides do deal more with the shadow side. So things will get dark in your life working with them. And it's not that they are demonic and they are bringing hell into your life. It's that 
all right, we got a, you're a warrior, you're conditioning. That is basically what my guides have done, especially the Morgan. The Morgan came into my life when I was doing a protection spell again, and I was at the, my wit's end telling my guides, why do I, like, why, why do I, it's like, I clear the energy. I'm trying to protect like 50 different people. I feel like every time I talk about black magic, everyone treats me like I'm crazy, but I see black magic on them. I can see black magic on them. So I remove it for them. And then two days later, it's back on them. And people are attacking people that I love and I'm trying to protect everybody, but it's like, it just keeps coming and keeps coming in. What can I, like, I'm not doing something right. What am I not doing right? Boom, the Morgan. Do you want to do it? You sure? And then it was, it was hell for about a week. I did not sleep. I did not sleep. I was terrified uh, of her, of her. She was scary. Um, and that's something that you need to be aware of. And you do research on the Morgan, that's typical. That's typical. Her energy is very scary because she is very serious. You can look up her myth. She is terrifying. <laughs> so uh, did she reveal inner power to me? Yes. Did she make my life kind of hell until I accomplished and I was conditioned to where she wanted me. Yes, but she told me that. She told me that I am going to shake you until I get you where I want you and then I'm gonna ease up. So you have to know who you're working with. Um, keeping promises and don't take on too much. Again, my guides, especially Anubis, Anubis is one that has really taken the lead on my spiritual team. And Anubis has told me several times, we will introduce you. And he said this after the Morgan, because he said the Morgan will be a lot for you. And if you cannot balance her energy with the rest of us, then we're not going to reveal ourselves. We are going to reveal ourselves slowly. Um, and you need to kind of prove that my altar is not, he said my altar is dusty right now, Rachel. <laughs> I know <laughs> you need to prove that my altar is not getting neglected. You know, my offerings are not drying up. Um, if you're going to continue, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> Sundays are the days that I clean my altars and I leave offerings and I have not done that yet today. And they're ragging on me for it. I will do it. Yes, I will. <laughs> um, I'll talk to you after the show. Um, don't take on too much and keeping promises. Again, this is not one of those things that God, if you, um, just let me live through this hangover, I promise I'm never going to drink again. It's not a good idea to do that to one of your guides, especially a very powerful guide, because like, especially when the Morgan is one of the most powerful guides I've ever worked with. Um, her energy is very much a, are you sure? Because I'm going to rattle you to your core until I'm happy with your progression and then I'll back off. But if I feel like you're not doing what you need to do, I'm going to unleash hell into your life. And it's a conditioning thing. So don't, don't agree, you know, don't, especially don't call on someone like that. Um, and don't agree to just, sure, okay, I've seen your stuff around, sure. It's, it's a commitment. It really is a commitment. And you need to keep your promise. And if you don't, then you can't expect the blessings and guidance they're giving you to continue because it's a relationship and you need to work on the relationship, number eight. So guys, that is where I'm going to uh, cut it off. Um, oh, my other, I never addressed her. So uh, I will tell you the story about how I met Oya um, or Yamaya. <laughs> I was about to call her, uh, what is it? Yamoja. There we go. There we go. Uh, I did work with Oya. Oh, okay. Oya wanted me to mention her. I worked with Oya. She's another Orisha um, for a little bit. She introduced herself to me uh, shortly after I started working with Ogun. I worked with Oya for a few months and then she um, actually how she let me know that she was done working with me. The bracelets that I get, some of them are just, you know, for different things that I want. Um, some of them are uh, prayer bracelets. Um, they're dedicated to certain guides that I'm working with. So Oya was one that I, I got a bracelet for her to connect deeper with her energy. I was working with her for a while. 
Um, and then I, it, she, she brings the winds of change. She brings major transitions to your life. And it was during a time that a lot was going on. This was actually around the time that I made the decision to leave my full-time job and do this full time. And so she, she was one that called on me and said, we're going to do this together. I'm, I'm going to help you through this. So she did. And when uh, she was done with me, my, my bracelet with her actually broke. And that's happened to um, a couple others. That happened with Archangel Michael because he let me know that he wasn't gonna be around as much as he used to be because I didn't need him anymore. He's still a part of my team. He still watches over me. He still comes to say hi every once in a while. But those of you that have been here through the years, you'll recognize that I, I don't work with Archangel Michael like I did. He was in every single reading before. Now it's like rare that he comes. It, it's that type of thing where he'll come in and check up on me, but he's not with me all the time because he doesn't, He I'm not in need of him as much. Um, I mentioned this in the other reading, Archangel Michael, all the all of them have signs. Um, all of them have different ways that they'll try to speak with you. And it's good to, like I said, I would look into your ancestry and I would look into if you can do past lives, um, if you are able to astral project, if you're if you are able to um, look into your Akashic records, look into your past lives and what you were doing in your past life. You know what? Um, you know, obviously where you were, what those people were worshiping and what you were doing specifically, like I was talking about with Ogun, if you knew that you lived in the Nigeria area and you knew that, you know, you were somebody that worked with your hands, it's a good chance that Ogun was working with you. So maybe look into, okay, what are the signs of Ogun? And then, you know, um, Machete is one. Um, all of them have different ways that they call to you. Okay. <laughs> uh, she, uh, some people call her Yamaya. She has told me that where I'm, my ancestors are from, how she wants to refer to me, what I've called her in past lives is, see, I started to get red when I talked about Michael. Thank you, Michael. Um, Yamoja is what she wants to be called. There's two different pronunciations. She, I resonate with Yamoja. Um, I actually was introduced to her this summer. I knew that Ogun was my father, Orisha. You have a father and mother, Orisha. Um, and then also, you know, it, Destiny, Orisha. I, I already talked about this. Don't, don't come for me. I was at the beach and um, I felt that I had a guide that wanted to come to me. And I um, asked her, I actually script a lot of times. So I, I scripted, you know, saying that my my guide would come to me, my guide would reveal themselves. Um, and then it was when I was actually swimming in the ocean that she almost drowned me. <laughs> uh, I was swimming alone in the ocean, which is not good. And I was like way over my head, but I just needed to be in the ocean sometimes. Um, I almost drowned and she was speaking to me, um, which I can channel with my guide. So she, she introduced herself and let me know that she was my mother. Um, and that she wanted me to, you know, spend so much time in the ocean so that she could cleanse me. Um, so that is how I met her. And then I went to a shop after that and um, I felt really connected with the mermaid and then learning more about her, her symbol is a mermaid. So that is my mother and, um, ah! and she didn't, she was one that she doesn't like me to talk about her, but she said I can say who she is. Um, yeah, and then with a relationship, working on the relationship, setting up an altar when you find out that that's your guide, you know, giving them, putting a candle there to pull in their energy, leaving offerings, finding out what they like. Um, like, uh, and then <laughs> I know you should go broke, but I do this thing with my guides that when they bless me with, um, when they bless me, especially financially, I like to go and bless them. So, um, I have a tendency when I'm blessed with money, I will go, um, within reason, go and get them gifts. And sometimes that's a candle. Sometimes that is, you know, some, a lot of my guides like whiskey offerings, some of them like red wine offerings. Um, and so I, I get them presents sometimes. And then sometimes they actually like, you know, this is Anubis is, and look at how cool this was. This was, uh, a find. And when I saw it, Anubis doesn't like as much on his, he likes more so um, 
stuff from nature that he's, he really likes feathers for me. He sends me feathers a lot. He's not the only one that sends me feathers, but he likes feathers. <sighs> Look at how cool this is. <laughs> when I saw this, I knew that Anubis wanted it because it was a cool thing. That's a mummy inside. <laughs> So yeah, I get them presents and I get really excited to get them presents and I put them out on their altar and I do smoke clearings and I clean off their stuff. So again, it's a working relationship that you work on with your guides. So anyway, uh, this is long enough. I love you guys a lot. I hope that's been helpful. Um, I will try to answer as many questions as I can. Uh, the poll is up again for next week. Uh, let me know what you would like to see and if you have any suggestions for uh, future readings, let me know. I mean, not readings. <laughs> for future channelings. All right, bye.